Bam! Hey everybody, the last Outrider here with another episode of Who Are Adeptus Mechanicus. This time we're going to be talking about the battle station Graia, the crown of miracles. The planet of Graia, which is not the first to bear that name, was brought to the brink of ruination by the wars its Skitari fought against voracious Denorian predators. The gigantic space stations high above its surface are the only structures left relatively intact. They glitter in the Gryan firmament, the carbon fiber expressways that lead between them forming the strings of a spider's web that spans half the globe. This lattice of nucleic metropolises and macrofilament tubes writhes in the atmosphere, much like a living thing. Gryas battle maniples constantly patrol its corridors until they are called upon to fight wars of exploration or plunder or data theft. By retrofitting giant fusion engines to each of the nodes, Gryas tech priests can transform their domain into a mobile battle station that they can settle above any planet they choose to invade. The Skatare of Graia are known for their refusal to yield, no matter the odds. Some attribute this to scrap code born of war trauma. Only a binaric imperative from a senior tech priest can cause them to retreat. Their redoubtable war ethic is seen as a sign of great devotion to the machine god, though their allies in the Astra Militarum see their stubbornness as the liability it truly is. That's some interesting stuff there. <clears throat> so Graia, essentially then, is not a planet. It's not a forge world, per se, but a forge battle station that can be used... To this is really where we're getting into, into Tyranids. Uh, the similarity is just too great. So this is basically a hive ship, when you think about it. It's a flying battle station that is capable, to, capable of covering half, half a, a, an Earth-sized planet, and then it just basically, as they would say it, invade, which would be doing what? Taking all of the natural resources of the planet and then using that to build war engines. And then when it's done, it moves on to another planet. Tell me that's not like feeding. But anyways, here's another one. At the end of it, they have the Creed Mechanicus. All of the Adeptus Mechanicus worship the machine god in one form or another. This practice began before the birth of the Imperium, when the original Martian settlers were beset by solar radiation and plague. The devotees of the emergent machine cult hunted out and applied the technologies necessary to provide shelter and safety. And soon, technology became synonymous with life itself. The machine truths they found were enshrined within the temple of all knowledge. And vast monuments were raised to their new inhuman god. Over the millennia, the cult prospered and became dominant. It propagated the belief that every machine had a spirit, and that efficiency 
and perfection of function were far superior to concerns such as emotion or spontaneity. Most of the Adeptus Mechanicus worship the Emperor in his perfection as the Omnissiah, the machine god incarnate. For he not only knows all, but comprehends all. And so, their creed coexists with the imperial faith of the ecclesiarchy. However, some see the Omnissiah as a mortal prophet rather than a god. They believe in as a far older deity, and that the machine god is with them on Mars, not on Terra. The religious implications of this have created a long hidden schism that could potentially lead to a devastating war of faith. So that's probably the first time we've ever seen the Machine Creed actually spelled out to us in 40K in detail. It is older than the Emperor's Cult. It existed before the Imperium. And let's go over the similarities yet again. The Necron were a race of beings who lived on a planet bathed in radiation from their sun, living, living short, horrible lives, until they prayed to the star gods, and a star god answered and came down and gave them the biotransference technology, where they were able to transfer their consciousnesses from <laughs> their, their flesh to to the, to the uh, necrodermis, the, the metal, metal bodies. And now here we have the machine cult with exactly that same story, far older than the Imperium. Now, we know that the Void Dragon was one of the star gods, the star god of technology. And we've also known that this has, that he's been um, imprisoned, or she's been imprisoned on Mars for about the last hundred, ooh, 50, 50,000 years. The emperor, basically he was on Terra, and back then the emperor was called the knight instead of the emperor, I guess he needed to get promoted, and he fought the dragon, the void dragon, and subdued it and banished it to Mars. That's true, it's in the fluff, check it out. So, you tie all of this together with what we just heard here, and what are we seeing? That this is basically, well, I can't, I'm, I'm trying, I don't want to refer back to too many other videos, but basically if you go back to the other videos, I was saying that there's, um, the Emperor is actually the Silent King, he's actually the Overmind, and he's actually uh, what caused the fall of the Eldar, the laughing god there. He's been doing all of these things throughout time, because time doesn't exist in 40K. And that whole thing is one huge plan to end chaos in the galaxy, spanning millions of years. Not and in fact, the entire existence of humanity, humans themselves, was just a part of the plan. In in something in a pl that that was bigger and older than than humanity itself. That's how I think it's going to go down. Until next time, bye.